They're off. The Pertemps Network, Yorkshire Oaks with a mile and a half ahead of them. Nova Kai in the yellow and black spots got out well. And so too, save the last dance, the dark blue silks for Ryan Moore, helping to push the early pace along with warm heart and a pink jacket. A Poptronic out wide, the red cap and blue stocking closer to the running rail, the pink cap, as they go along at a, around about 37 miles an hour through the first quarter mile. And uh, save the last dance is dictating here. And leads them into the first turn. To Poptronic shading second, Nova Kai in a spotted jacket racing in third. And then Warm Heart in the pink silks just shading fourth. To Blue stocking up the fence, Ross Carberry, maroon silks sitting back in midfield. Ahead of Al Husson, the striped cap, the Shadwell silks. Uh, Frankie aboard the uh, white face mare, Free Wind, racing with a couple behind at this stage. Sea Silk Road in the yellow and purple is one of them. And Stay Alert in the yellow and blue looks on from last place. Heading down past the seven being led at an even sort of a pace here uh, by Ryan Moore aboard Save the Last Dance to Poptronic and Nova Kai, the running rail, and then Warm Heart to Blue Stocking in the Judmont Silks as they begin the turn at halfway. Ross Carberry in a maroon jacket is out wide from Al Husson. White face free wind in the hands of Frankie Dottori, still with Sea Silk Road and Stay Alert for company at the rear of the field. They're on the crown of the bend with five furlongs left to cover in the Pertemps Network, Yorkshire Oaks, and they're still nudging 36, 37 miles an hour. They were around 12 seconds for the last furlong. Save the last dance, leads them in, and at this stage is staying close to the inside running rail. Poptronic, the red cap shaken up in second as more now asks save the last dance for more in front. Blue stocking in the Judmont silks. White sleeves pink cap making headway. So too Warm Heart who comes there travelling powerfully in a pink jacket. Al Husson away to the left. Ross Carberry second from the left. Blue stocking trying to thread through. Save the last dance. Challenged by her stable mate Warm Heart who's come there looking a real threat. Then Blue stocking. Here's Frankie on free wind beginning to run on from the rear. Aboard the white face mare as Warm Heart goes to the front inside the furlong Frankie coming over the top is this another Frankie special free wind drawing alongside warm heart who's digging in very gamely inches either way desperately close between warm heart and free wind at the end of the Yorkshire Oaks save the last dance back in third chased home by blue stocking and stay alert if we're standing in the winner's enclosure with James Doyle, you'd normally expect him to be wearing the blue Godolphin silks. Not today. He's ridden his first winner for Aidan O'Brien in the Pertemps Network, Yorkshire Oaks, Warm Heart. Many congratulations. This is different, isn't it? It is. A uh, different <laughs> colour. But, um, yeah, obviously two, two great teams, aren't they? And there's been some immense battles over the years. And, yes, uh, I was thrilled to pick up this ride. I was quietly hoping I could get the ride on her. She was still a gap. Um, quite late on and I was praying I did because I thought back on this track fast ground um, would definitely suit her and I was just praying we got a tiny bit of rain so the other one would run but anyway it's all worked out fantastic and I can't be um, more thankful to the whole team for entrusting me with uh, riding her. When did you get the call? On Dex morning yeah so she was still a gap so um, yeah I kept checking the sea and then it was a nice phone call when my agent rang me. And you must have been delighted to see the rain stay away because that swung the advantage in her favour. Well, it was spitting a little bit when I was driving up last night and I was thinking hopefully that'll just be enough. So, um, yeah, we had a tiny touch, but not too much. So, um, yeah, like you say, after riding early on in the day, um, pretty, pretty happy. It looked like you had the ideal position throughout. Would that be fair? Yeah, I mean, I was thinking it would be quite tricky early on. As we, even a mile and a half, drawing nine of ten is not ideal. Um, you still have to do a bit of work, but it just worked out perfectly. Suddenly I was one off the rail after a furlong and able to really bring her back and relax because I did have to ask her to jump quite sharp and I was worried she might do a little bit much early, but she came back to me really nicely and I was able to just save all the way around. Um, there was a little moment, I don't know whether it was blue stocking was coming up to look for a bit of room, so I just had to wake her up a little bit just to, to hold, hold that one in and then she really came alive for me then and uh, before the race, Aiden said, look, if you can try and be the last one to challenge inside the furlong pole and as you saw she took me down through the two nothing could take me and I was just praying for that furlong pole to come but I had to go a little bit earlier just to really focus her up um, and Frankie came at me I thought oh, here we go again uh, but she was very brave as we know um, it's a quality that um, Aidan O'Brien really trains in these horses they're very tough you know when you get in the guts of a battle you'd, you'd like to be on them yeah you could see and feel her finding. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that was why 
Aiden said to me beforehand, try not to you know, go too early, just relax and ride your race because she does. She quickened up to the front and just took her foot off the gas slightly, but she really woke up when, when the runner-up came to me. And how much were you helped by Ryan on Save the Last Dance, the Sable Companion in third, a thorough stayer, setting a good pace? Yeah, I, I, do you know what? I don't think that was too important. I think it m may have suited her if we'd have gone a, a touch slower because uh, I'd have had more of a kind of more runners to chase. We wouldn't. We, we kind of went an even, even tempo, and the runners kind of came back to me rather than me really sprinting to the front. So it, if the pace had been a bit slower, I, I think she probably would have been a bit more impressive. Mm. And how does she compare with your previous winner of the, of the race, CF Class? We all know what she went on to do and how good she was. How good do you think this filly is when she gets her condition? Yeah, I th that obviously with future races, obviously from riding CF Class, we obviously went on to the arc and races like that in biblical ground. And <laughs> I, I'm not sure that's quite her bag. She has one on it, but she's got a beautiful action. She really strokes the ground. So um, look, they're great race planners. They know. Um, what they're doing so I won't interfere with that but like I said it means a lot to me to you know I, I grew up watching the titanic battles between you know fantastic light and those great horses um Irish champion stakes really great races to watch and it's just it really means a lot I've, I've ridden for Aiden for a, a few a few years now and not quite got the results I kind of hoped you know yours when you ride one of his yours no, you've got a squeak, you know, we've seen plenty of them win over the years and yeah, it's really nice. I hit the crossbar over in Australia on one a few years ago, so it's nice to, um, really, it means a lot. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure, very professionally satisfying. Many congratulations, well done, Jane. Thank you very much, thank, thank you. you. Aidan O'Brien has just trained his seventh winner of the Yorkshire Oaks. Warm Heart has won, and for good measure, Save the Lance Dance has finished third as well. Congratulations. Uh, that race worked out ideally for you, didn't it? Yeah, it did, Lydia. Obviously, Ryan was going to make the run if nobody went, and, and that's what he did. He wanted an even pace for his filly. Uh, we know that she stays very well. Mm. When the ground gets slow, it helps her because it makes it tougher on the others, um, but still ran a great race. Um, uh, this filly, uh, a very good filly, won very well at Ascot. Uh, it was a little bit of a blip at the her the last day uh, she was just got back a little bit of a slowly run race on softish ground and uh, when the race was slow it was hard to make up the ground but um, no she's a very good filly um, Rachel rides her out every day and rides her in all her work uh, Jamie's in charge of her does an incredible job uh, Hazel obviously led her up so uh, then big team around her so uh, listen very grateful to everybody but I'm delighted for the lads really do you think she's at her, at her best on this kind of fast surf? I, I think so, uh, and she's I have no problem with a mile and a quarter, but loves fast ground, and she's very slick filly, um, beautiful quality filly. And with that in mind, might, be she, might she be the type that you take to America, perhaps? I think she would. I, I think she'd be probably made for the mm. fillies and mares turf. Uh, I, I think it would suit her really well, and she's a nice size too, and she's strong, and, and she has tactical speed as well. And that travelling as well would be fine for her, would it? Yeah, no, she's very off-handed and uh, taking everything in her stride uh, uh, obviously, all the way with every run this year. And would you be inclined to go straight to that, or would you might you try something in between? Yeah, yeah she could. She could go uh, Irish Champions weekend. She could go Arc weekend. Some of those, but she likes a nice bit of ground, and mm. maybe, maybe not to overface her or over put her, give her too much heart to before then, really. And do you think she's the kind of filly that might stay in training as a four-year-old? It's possible. Uh, the lads do keep horses mm. in training um, as four-year-olds, and and do some fillies as well. So I'd say they would definitely think about it at the end of the year. So. Um, would be great, but uh, she's a filly that uh, is progressing from run to run too. And so, do, do you think you'd recommend it if you if they are so I, that she might be better at four? Yeah, I, I think so definitely because she's quick filly and because she's strong, you know. So if if everything at the end of the year after her race is that she looks in good shape, I think it, it's definitely a possibility. And how about the third? What might you do with say the last dance? Is the ledger at all on your mind? Yeah, the, the, it was. She had a choice of probably the ledger or the arc. Uh, obviously, if she went to the ledger, it was t arc comes up two weeks after that, so it might be a little bit close. So she'd probably have to do one or the other. Mm. Um, but it does grow another leg on soft ground where most horses struggle, she, she improves. Okay, so if the arc was looking like it might be a soft ground arc, you might be going that way? Yeah, I, I think it's very possible. It's, it's, it's tricky because they're two weeks apart and mm. she'll probably be only get the trainer for one. Mm. So we'll probably give her an easy little bit now and then start again and see. But, um, Listen, we always thought that she could be a filly for the arc, especially if the ground got soft. Okay. Looking back to the Lyther, our first race, you must have been delighted with Cherry Blossom. She ran a corker, didn't she? Yes, yeah, and, and uh, we were a little bit worried that she was a little bit babyish and green coming here, and Ryan thought that as well. 
Uh, she's a big filly, handles and knees in the ground as well. Um, ground was probably as quick as she'd wanted today, but uh, he thinks that she was green and there would be plenty of improvement in her. And she's the, a three-year-old type, isn't she? She's oh. a potential Guinness type, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's a big, powerful filly, but she's by no name ever, mm -hmm. and, and he's a massive influence in speed. Mm -hmm. So um, probably five, six is their trip, maybe seven, and not one gets a mile, but he's a massive influence for speed, really. OK, so she's kind of a Commonwealth Cup horse that you've got in your she, mind. She could be, and, and maybe what we might have done with other horses, stretched them to get a mile. It mightn't be the right thing. We might just keep her at five or six because she's a big, powerful filly, and like I said, she is by no name. OK, OK, really interesting, Aid. Many congratulations on your seven success in this great one. Well done. Pleasure. Thanks, Lydia. Thank you. Thank you. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.